If you've ever watched a creationist in a debate, or if you've ever had the misfortune of debating one yourself, then it's very likely that at some point you've heard the argument that evolution is just a theory. And moreover, it tends to be said as if it was a fatal and devastating blow against evolution. Yet the irony, which may or may not be known by the proponents of this argument, is that calling evolution a theory is actually a tremendous compliment. While the argument that evolution is just a theory is very rarely presented in its logical form, for the purpose of clearly demonstrating why exactly it's flawed, I'm going to present it this way nonetheless. A theory is, by definition, an idea used to account for a situation or justify a course of action. Evolution is a theory. Therefore, evolution is just an idea used to account for a situation or justify a course of action. Or to present this argument in its conversational form, and, let's face it, the form you're far more likely to encounter, a creationist might say, evolution has never been proven to be true. If it had, it would be called the fact of evolution, or the law of evolution, but instead it's just called the theory of evolution. It's an unproven assumption. So why exactly is this argument flawed? Well, to put it as simply as possible, I'm going to show you Hemant Meta otherwise known as the friendly atheist, responding to the question, isn't evolution just a theory? No, it's not just a theory. The only people who ever say this are people who don't really understand what a scientific theory means. And that, folks, really is what this argument comes down to. A misunderstanding or a complete ignorance of what a scientific theory is. That's why this argument is flawed. Hence, the first major flaw with the argument that evolution is just a theory is that it commits, and that it pretty much entirely is, a huge equivocation fallacy. An equivocation fallacy is the misleading use of a word or a term with more than one meaning, by glossing over which meaning is intended at a particular time. And in this case, the equivocation fallacy occurs in the word theory. The argument uses one definition of the word theory during its first and third premises, that being, an idea used to account for a situation or justify a course of action. But it uses another definition of the word theory during its second premise, that being, a well-substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world that is acquired through the scientific method and repeatedly tested and confirmed, preferably using a written, predefined protocol of observations and experiments. And because it switches between these two definitions to attain its conclusion, it's not a coherent argument. But to really hammer home why exactly this flaw invalidates the argument, I'm going to present you with another equivocation fallacy for comparison purposes. Laws imply lawgivers, there are laws in nature. Therefore, there must be a cosmic lawgiver. While it's true that lawgivers create laws, and while it's true that there are laws within nature, this argument is using two very different definitions of the word law when it presents these premises, whether its proponents realise this or not. Just like the law argument, the just a theory argument uses one definition of an important word to its argument in its third and third premises, but a completely different definition of that important word within its second premise. And because of this, its conclusion is incoherent, and therefore invalid. If you can see the equivocation fallacy in the law argument, then you can see the equivocation fallacy in the just a theory argument. And if you can see the equivocation fallacy in the just a theory argument, then you're golden. You've got it. You now know how to destroy this argument when it's presented to you in the future. However, and to raise another, not so much of a flaw, but more of a comment, proponents of the just a theory argument tend not only to be unaware of what a scientific theory is, but they also tend to be unaware of the four degrees of scientific knowledge altogether, that being facts, laws, hypotheses, and of course, theories. To put it simply, a scientific fact is an objective and verifiable observation. For example, it's cold outside. A scientific law is a description of how some aspect of the universe behaves under stated circumstances, but not why. For example, Newton's law of universal gravitation. A scientific hypothesis is, for all intent and purposes, an educated guess. It's very similar to the everyday layman definition of the word theory. For example, eating vegetables causes weight loss because they're low in calories and high in fibre. And a scientific theory is a rigorously tested and confirmed hypothesis 
that accounts for all related facts and laws and has been proven to accurately predict future findings and phenomena. Or, as Matt Dillahunty puts it, a theory is the highest possible achievement of science. Hence, calling evolution a theory, which it is, is actually a tremendous compliment. The last small point I want to make on this matter is that evolution is technically both a fact and a theory. It's an uncontroversial fact that organisms have changed or evolved during the history of life on Earth, and the theory as to why these organisms have changed or evolved is called natural selection. Just as gravity is a fact, so is evolution, and just as general relativity is a scientific theory, so is natural selection. So, to recap, the argument that evolution is just a theory is flawed because it commits, and pretty much entirely is, an equivocation fallacy. It's guilty of being scientifically uneducated altogether. And it fails to recognise that evolution is technically both a fact and a theory. Evolution by natural selection isn't just a theory, it's a scientific theory, and the difference is paramount. As always, thank you kindly for the view, and thank you kindly for all the wonderful and thoughtful comments. I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch and comment on my videos. You could be spending your time doing anything else, but instead you've chosen to be here watching my videos, and that's not a fact that I take lightly. Anyhow, until next time my fellow apes, until next time.